Well, good morning, everybody. Look at all my overachievers this morning. You're a little more overachiever than I am. It's Lisa Copeland, 15 Minutes of Fierce. Today is the day. Tuesday, November 6th, Election Day in the great United States of America. All right, Paul, Natalie, Ricky, Anthony, thank you for your sweet message, Anthony, this morning. Tracy, Ken Walls, good morning. Uh, Josh, Melissa, Laura, Natalie, well, I can tell you, I, I've got a couple feelings about Election Day. First of all, I'm just glad it's over. Whether it goes my way or not, I'm glad it's over. And I, I kind of remember, I don't kind of remember, I remember it very, very well back when I was a car dealer. So I don't know if you guys know this or not, but during the elections, there's a certain amount of television time that um, that has to be sold at a certain cost to anybody running for, for office. So as a car dealer that was on television all the time, that was me, during the election cycles, you know, my television exposure got cut a lot, my TV commercials, because we had to let the, um, or the, you know, the political ones had to play. You know, and as I was watching them last night, and I thought, you know, if these politicians would spend more time about building a movement for good, instead of trashing each other, you know, there's there's one race here locally that's just it's just gotten downright dirty, like they're they're swinging mud at the kids. So, anyways, whatever. I'm glad it's over today. I hope you go vote. You know, versus complain about it, go vote about it. Uh, I want to congratulate. I know a lot of us know Mr. Glenn Lundy out there. He had a beautiful daughter yesterday, healthy. Her name is Oakland. And I thought, and it's spelled O-A-K-L-Y-N-N. -N, and I thought, that is the cutest name I've ever seen. And then it hit me, ding, ding, ding. He's the biggest Oakland Raiders fan in the history of the world. So he got to name his baby girl Oakland, which I think is fantastic. So anyways, congratulations to um, Glenn and Leslie, to the Lundies on their beautiful baby number seven. And she's healthy. And all of us could not be happier for you, my friend. Could not be happier. Okay, so we've gotten that out of the way, check. I've gotten out of the way, check, check, go vote. Let's see who's on here this morning. Nigel, Michelle, Bill, 545 Pacific. Bill, this one's for you, doll. Uh, Jonathan, Michelle, Linda says she voted early. Sandra. Mm. So anyways, yes. So so on the spirit of voting, on the spirit of, I, I, I do think, I think a lot of people get into politics for good reasons. You know, my dear friend Cindy uh, Borland, who is a justice for the Third Court of Appeals uh, here in Texas, she's running. I want to wish her good luck. That is my only public endorsement. She's a wonderful friend of mine and a wonderful public servant. And um, I, think, I, think, I think she's got a tough race on her hands today. So I want to wish her luck. But let's just think about that. You know, we, we talked about, you know, the big sell. You know, everything that we're doing now around the book and about my speaking and my consulting team is about how to help companies, how to help people take an idea to impact, you know, and so much of it was in the beginning, and you guys heard me talk about, you know, you know we got to start a movement, you've got to start a movement. Well, the feedback I was getting from people and from companies and from friends, it's like, we think that's great, Lisa, but it's too big of an idea. The average person doesn't, doesn't, don't, doesn't believe that they have the capacity to start a movement. Now, I'm going to disagree with that, and I'm going to talk about that this morning. I do. I think everybody has the capability to start a movement, you know, because a movement doesn't have to be where 2,000 people, 3,000 people show up and, you know, there's a rally. A movement is, is when you help incite change, right, whatever that may be. I mean, you could start a movement in your neighborhood to help, you know, um, I don't know, feed stray cats if you wanted to, right? You could knock on every door and you could say, hey, you know, there's a bunch of cats in the neighborhood. They're, they're great animals. You know, they're helping keep away the mice and whatever. But obviously, you know, they don't have homes. And we could all together, you know, we could take turns and we could feed them. I mean, I just totally pulled that out of the air. But you can do anything you want to do. Um, let's see, Chris Walsh, good morning. Oh, gosh, I'm sick yesterday. I had Chris on a big seller show with Vets Cars and we got cut off and it was my fault. It was my audio, so I apologize. But that's someone else who started a movement, right? If you don't like how something is going, your idea, how do you take it to impact? And, you know, the one thing that you have to do, I talked to my dear friend Sharon Lecter for probably an hour last night, you know, and I was talking to her about some stuff. And of course, she has sold 30 million books. So when I want advice about my book, 
I call Ghostbusters, better known as Sharon Lecter, right? She knows how to do it, and she's a brilliant woman. And, and she's like, I love idea to impact. She said, because, you know, everybody wants to make impact. And I know all of you want to make impact, but, you know, how do we, how do we take the big sell into our businesses, right? And that's, that's what businesses pay me to do. That's what, that's what they pay me to come speak about is to inspire their people to do something bigger than just sit behind the four walls of the business. But, you know, one of the things that you have to do if you're an employee or, or you're someone like me trying to sell the, you know, you have to sell the decision maker. And you feel like you're slaying Goliath sometimes, right? Um, because you can't start a movement. You really, it's very hard to take an idea that you've got if you're working for someone else or if you're trying to convince somebody to do something without getting it past the decision maker. So how do you get it past the decision maker? Anthony, he says, yes. Frank says, absolutely. Robert says, I'm watching. That's good. Um, you know, but there are so many of us out there, you know, doing what I do. You know, I'm a consultant, I'm a speaker, so I have to sell a decision maker every single day to buy what I'm selling. And I learned a long time ago, I don't want to compete on price anymore. I don't want to compete on the lowest price. I don't want to compete on the fact that I've got more, uh, more of a quantity than someone else. I want to compete on the fact that that company is going to be better off for hiring me or hiring my team or using my product or service. So versus selling, even the value I sell the big idea. I sell the impact that it will have on the company. And of course, the, the bottom line is, is impacted. Otherwise, don't hire me. But at the end of the day, you know, it's got to be more than price. And it's got to be more. I mean, people today, especially this next generation of millennials, they are inspired about something bigger. And it takes me back to that young sales team that I had when, when we, when we, when we, <laughs> I decided that I wanted to make an audacious bet with then chairman of the board of the Chrysler Corporation, FCA, Mr. Sergio Marchioni. And, I, and I, I went to the team and I said, you know, I have to meet this man. Like, he's my hero. I think he's the greatest guy in the industry. Blah, blah, blah. And I said, and the only way we're going to be able to do it, I've been told, is if we break the record, um, the uh, world sales record for the hatchback, the small, the two-door car. And I thought, you know, and you know, none, none of them even knew who Mark, Marchioni was, but what they did want and what, how I could galvanize them. Because remember, I didn't do it. I had the um, honor of leading what I say the greatest team in the country was. They did the work, right? I was the strategist. I was the cheerleader. But they were the ones out there physically moving the iron over the curb. I did sell a few cars that month, though. I won't lie. Um, but it was galvanizing around the big idea. What impact would us breaking that record have on them? How would it make their life better? I knew what it would do for me. It would change the course of my career the rest of my life, and it did. When Sergio Marchioni came in on his G5 with an entire uh, security crew, and security had to come in the night before and guard my dealership, because back then he was the head of the European Auto Union also, um, the chairman of the board of Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram Ferrari Maserati Alfa Romeo in the U.S. and in Europe, I mean... Mr. Marchioni was um, a legend. That's an understatement. And if you're in the auto industry, it would be um, the equivalent to, or if you're in any other industry, it was the equivalent of meeting a man who was a cross between Jesus and Bono. That was my best description of Mr. Marchioni, Jesus and Bono. Um, so anyways, but I had to, but there was nothing I could do by myself. So I had to rally my big idea. I knew the impact it would have in my life, my career, and I knew the impact it would have for our business, for our dealership to get, you know, be, become that high profile in the auto industry. But what impact would it have on the people actually doing the work? Well, it would change their life forever because I told them, good morning, Mr. Lundy. I told them, I said, no one will ever be able to take away from you the fact that you guys broke the world sales record. It will be something that you can own forever. It'll be something you can put on your resume forever. It'll be something you can be proud of forever. So don't do it for me. Do it for you. Do it for your future. Do it for... And do it because you want to make an impact in the auto industry. You want to be able to show an industry that women, minorities, and millennials have what it takes to break the world sales record. And that is the big idea they got behind. Not, oh, Lisa wants to meet the chairman of the board. I mean, they said that, that yeah, that they wanted me to do that. But at the end of the day, that is not enough to rally people around 
a big idea to have impact. It can't be about you. You know, I would say I started the movement by making the bet with then chair or then uh, head of fiat brand Tim Kaniscus. So yes, I made the bet. I started the movement, but for me to take the idea, the big idea that I wanted our team to do that and to create the impact of actually doing it, I had to have a different path with the people actually doing the work. There had to be something in it for them. And I think that's where we get lost sometimes on building a movement or the big idea or when we're trying to sell something is that we go in and we talk about how it's going to benefit us and, and we don't spend enough time on the on the big impact, on the big idea, on how it will truly change the lives of that business, of the culture uh, or the legacy of that business. So I want you guys to think about that. We're going to dig into that this week. Um, good morning, Janelle and Nigel and Glenn Lundy, Aaron Sheeks. Good morning. Uh, Lundy, if you did not hear earlier, I don't think you were on yet, but we gave you a big shout out and a congratulations on baby Oakland, uh, healthy birth. We're so happy for you. And I think I figured out why you named her Oakland. I thought it was the cutest name I ever saw yesterday. And then I'm like, oh, it's the Oakland Raiders. <laughs> I may be wrong, but go ahead and stick it out there. So as you are formulating, as you go forward, everybody, with your big idea, I want you to consider the impact that that getting it, you know, that, 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 that pushing through your big idea can have both for you personally and for your business. Because see, my big idea to make that crazy bet changed my life both personally and professionally. Period. End of story. It was the one thing in, in my entire career, any company I've ever had or owned or run or anything, that was the one thing that um, absolutely was a game changer for me. And um, so what is the one thing, what is the one big idea you've got that you can take and you can create impact for your family, for your business, for your, co for your customers, for your community? What is it that you can do? That's why I know it's why all of you get on this show in the morning because you're looking for the big idea. Uh, trendy, good morning, Subaru. S Subaru, hey Subaru. Subaru Steve says, Wow, I love this. Sell the idea, not what you are and what you can do. However, keep the focus on the idea. Uh, keep the focus on the idea, leaving yourself out of it. Yeah, it can't be about you. I mean, and it really, you know, and I, I look back on mine and mine, it was a little selfish. There's, there's no doubt about it. But I also looked holistically what it would do for our business. I mean, we were on, I mean, the entire International Press Corps was there. We were on local media. I mean, you know, so everybody knew what we did. And it was all over the media, both nationally, internationally, locally. So, you know, you can't buy that kind of advertising for a business. And it helped because of the, the um because of the media, you know, I was able to tell our story in the media. The fact that we were, I was the anti-car dealer, that we were the anti-car dealership, that we were out here to revolutionize the industry, that we wanted to um, escalate the buying process for women and elevate it and elevate the customer journey. And, you know, this is why we do what we do every day. And thank you for taking time to listen to our story. And by the way, if you ever need a car, come see us because we are the good people, right? So, you know, you can take something great and you can you, you can make it greater and greater and greater. And look, it's 2018 and I still get to tell that story, right? And I, I get to tell that story the rest of my life, as do the people that were involved at the time. So it's very, very important. Um, in fact, um, uh, Robert Cardosi, who's on today, his son-in-law, Drew Barker, was on that world-breaking team. So anyways, and he and I, you know, I know that he still tells the story, as he should. He was a very important part of that team. Uh, Michelle, this is such a great episode. Thank you. Janelle, Jeff, Linda Lattimore says, morning. Hope all the teams are heading out to vote today and use their voices and big ideas. Yes, I hit up the voting. Go out and vote today. And can I just tell you how happy I'm going to be tomorrow when every other commercial is not mudslinging political campaign commercial. It's going to be a good life again. So go out there, get to know who your Goliath is, come up with a strategy, a big idea strategy to persuade the decision maker so that so that you can bring your big idea to life. Because when you bring your big idea to life, you're building your legacy. Your legacy is not your end of life story, but it is your everyday story. And I want to see you guys make it as big and fabulous as you can. It is seven o'clock. So our 15 minutes is up. Have a fantastic day and I will see all of you tomorrow. Go be fierce.